chapter eight. Uh, this is section 8.1. In general, chapter eight is about uh, a lot of different kind of advanced integration techniques, uh, advanced kind of integral moves. I think I've said this before, but we're at the point now where we've kind of done most of the, the kind of simpler setups. And now we need to just like start using our wits and just being clever to find different, uh, to evaluate different integrals and find different antiderivatives. Um, we have, of course, all of our different, right, kind of standard integration rules. Uh, I want to briefly review from the bottom here some inverse trig ones. So we have kind of the standard versions here. Uh, you know, one over the root one minus x squared gets us this arc sine of x. Uh, one over one plus x squared gets us the arc tangent of x. One over x times the uh, ab the uh, 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 square root of x squared minus one. Sorry, I was about to say absolute value for no reason. <laughs> uh, the the root of x squared uh, minus one is arc secant of x, right? All plus big C. Um, I, I, I just kind of can't remember actually if we ever put them on paper, but you can sort of do generic versions of all three of those uh, integrals. So where you have not just a, you know, a one plus or a one minus x squared on the bottom, but if you have it with sort of a generic a value, right? So one over a squared plus x squared. And then, you know, from here you could even do like u sub versions of this. Um, but you can get a semi-decent, this is kind of a, a, a variation on what we think of as our um, kind of trivial u subs where we had uh, integrals where it's like a times x is the u. Um, so versions of this for our um, inverse trig functions would be sort of a one over a squared plus x squared gets us this one over one over a in front of the arctangent of x over a. So you get this kind of fraction, uh, fraction u on the inside. Uh, and then similar versions for arc sine, for arc secant. Um, these still are just pretty, uh, the, the arc sine and the arc secant are, are kind of the easiest to pick out because they have the roots and, the, and they have the terms under the roots in very specific orders, right? Sort of the number minus the x squared or the x squared minus the number. Um, those are just gonna stand out because of that form. The arc tan one can be um, a little bit less obvious because it doesn't have the root. Um, and in theory, right, I mean, the, the order here is arbitrary. You know, you could have you know, 16 plus x squared, or you could have x squared plus 25, right? I mean, the, the order there is 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 not really important. Um, so we want to have, in particular, this arctan one kind of at the ready. Um, the other thing here, I'm not going to go through and um, necessarily uh, come up with these formulas, but you can use um, natural log to sort of, with some very specific kind of trig moves and trig setups, to find antiderivatives for like tangent, cotangent, secant, and cosecant. And, and these are kind of generic versions where you have kind of an a times x there on the inside. Uh, if it's just an x, of course, then everything here is just an x. Um, tangent actually has sort of two different versions. Uh, you, you can do a version here where you get one over a times the natural log of uh, secant of ax. That's the one that's in the book. But, but in theory, even if you do log rules and Think of secant as cosine to the negative one and then do right negative one kind of comes out in front you could also get sort of uh, negative one over a the natural log of cosine of of ax um the the setup here is just remembering that tangent is sine over cosine so if you rewrite this as sine of ax over cosine of ax and then do a u sub where you you pick the bottom right pick sine uh i'm sorry pick cosine as your as your u, then you can kind of go through all this and 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 you can sort of rewrite it and solve it. You get similar ones for cotangent uh, and then more complex one for secant and cosecant. So cotangent, right, would be cosine over sine. So you get um, one over a, right, natural log uh, absolute sine of, of a times x. Um, and then secant and cosecant, you, you get these more complicated ones that are coming from more complicated fractions. So again, I don't really want to go into the details here, but in theory, we kind of have these forms and we really just want to kind of know that we have them. So if at some point, just like going through an integral, we run into, uh, you know, not just a sine or a cosine, but like 
a cotangent, a tangent, right, a secant or a cosecant. If we hit an individual trig function just like by itself, there are integrals for all of those now that we can sort of use from here. So that's a little bit of just like a formula review. Um, the other thing I wanted to sort of talk about here uh, in this first section, this this first uh, section in chapter eight is, is kind of a, a review of some of our basic approaches. So some of it is, is you know, using a little bit of these kind of like less common forms. Um, and the other thing that I want to spend a little more time on are um, approaches for various rational functions, right? So a rational integral. Um, so rational means, right, like a fraction. So, so if you've got uh, some sort of integration where you have a fraction form. In general, what we've said a lot of the time is you want to do a u sub and you want to let the bottom equal u. Um, that's still a, a, a pretty decent kind of go-to move. But I want to compare two of these together. Um, and then we're going to expand this and keep going in the next video. So the two I want to compare are right the, the integral 1 over 9 plus x squared dx versus uh, the integral 3x over 9 plus x squared dx. So the same denominator here. I've just sort of changed the top. And, and in particular, what I've changed is um, the degree of the polynomial up top. So this first form fits... with the, the integration form for arctangent, right? So we were just saying the integral, you know, one over a squared plus x squared is gonna be this one over a arctan of, of x over a kind of integral. So this first one fits that setup perfectly, right? This would be just sort of rewritten, right? This is kind of three squared. I, I just need to kind of rewrite the, you know, rewrite the nine as three squared. The idea there is you're kind of using the roots as your sort of base values. And, and so if I had that, I can essentially just jump straight to my um, antiderivative, one third, arctan, right, of, in this case, it's x divided by three, plus big C. So this works because you have, right, sort of the, this like number plus x squared kind of form on the bottom. And then you don't have any x's up top, but just as some constant, you know, if this was a, a five or a seven or a negative 10 or something, uh, all those numbers you could pull out in front and they wouldn't really have much of an impact here, right? They would just multiply by the one third. Um, the second example here is a little bit different, right? Because now this is not gonna be arctan, but this is gonna be one where we can let u equal the denominator, right? So we can do a u sub, and I'll rewrite this down underneath. So 3x plus x squared dx. So the giveaway here is, right, when is it gonna work to pick denominator, the, the, the denominator as your u versus trying to look for like this arctan type setup? Um, and, and the short answer is um, you want to look at the relationship between the, the degree on the top and the bottom, the degree being, right, the, the highest exponent. So the u substitution where you pick the bottom equal to u works if essentially your, your top uh, function is, is a derivative of, of what's on the bottom or could be a version of it, right? So if my u is 9 plus x squared, that means my du dx, right? My derivative is 2x. So dx, right, would be du divided by 2x. So that 2x derivative is gonna be enough to clean up the 3x that's left over on top. And this is gonna give me uh, uh, my sort of standard, mostly standard, uh, 3x. Usually I change my colors here, so I'll do that. Right, u on the bottom, du over 2x. Right, so the move here is the x's are gonna cancel each other out. So this is really right, kind of three over u du. That's just three times natural log of absolute u plus c, right? This is just a nice standard um, natural log integral, right? Where the, the sort of upper 
uh, the, the upper part of the fraction, the numerator is essentially a version of, of the derivative of the bottom um, outside of whatever kind of, oh, whoops, I totally uh, disappeared that, that two, right? This should be two, one half is here. So that's three over two. The num both of those numbers are still there, my bad. So three halves, right? Natural log of the original, nine plus x squared, right? Plus c. So that's a really different approach than the Arctan one. The Arctan is, is this very specific setup, right? Where we've got kind of, uh, you know, just the single number on top. Um, this, if we start to get some x's involved, if, if there's sort of is a, is a drop by one in the powers and, and the, uh, uh, you know, our stuff here kind of matches up, then, then we can make it work. Um, this also means we can kind of combine those two. So if I maybe compare this to, you know, what would be kind of a version of kind of both of these together. So maybe I've got 3x plus 1 over 9 plus x squared dx. So, so this is where you're starting to say, okay, so now I have kind of a little bit of both. I mean, in theory, there's, there's sort of an obvious dropping that's happening, right? X squared kind of down to 3x. I, you know, in theory, that should work, but then it's this plus 1. That would mean I would need like a plus x on the bottom. I just don't have that. Um, so what we're going to do is, is a move that we have done before, and that's just going to be to split this up into, right, two different integrals, right? So I'm going to break it up uh, as 3x over the 9 plus x squared and then 1 over 9 plus x squared, right? Both of them dx. Right, so we've done that before. When we did it, before we did it, usually when we just had a single term on the bottom, um, and then you were kind of actually reducing and, and heading towards power rule type stuff. Um, it, it works if you have longer, uh, you know, longer terms too, now that we have a few more different techniques kind of under our belt uh, and are maybe expecting to use them a little more than we would otherwise. So this is just uh, the exact same two that I, I wrote up here, right? So, so I've actually done the integration for both of these already. So this would be right, the first one is this log one, right? So that's gonna be my three halves, natural log. I'm not gonna run through all the steps again, right? Plus, right, the antiderivative here, this was the arctan, right, with, with one over three. And then x over three. Uh, I, I just need one plus big C in the end. I don't, I don't need two of them here. So there's a couple different approaches here, right? Depending on uh, the, the sort of size of the stuff on top versus the stuff on the bottom. Um, the thing we didn't do is where you're going to start to have maybe, maybe kind of equals, equal degree polynomials on the top and the bottom or bigger powers on top and bottom, a bigger degree. Um, so that'll be in the next video. So tune in, tune into that one to see what comes next.